somebody asked me if you have to take the whole shock out to take the wheel hub off, you don't have to. And you just hold this over like this, and then maybe just catch this guy. I'm gonna pound it out. It's moving. Thank you. You could leave the ball joint attached down here, which provides more resistance rather than somebody holding and every time you hit the hammer it goes like this. But the problem with that is it puts stress on the ball joint. And this obviously saves you of having to take the shock out, uh, but whichever works best for you. And like I said, I usually take the whole thing out. It's just a bolt here and a bolt here. And then, the, sorry, I even leave this connected. So the whole thing comes out and I just pound it out on the bench. Uh, disconnecting it here, sliding it off the shock is, a, is an option, but it's a pain in the ass to line back up uh, and slide, back, slide the shock back in. Uh, so, if you, if you can't take the whole thing out, again, it's only one, one nut at the top, and then you disconnect everything and the whole thing comes out, it's fairly easy. So if you can't do that, do it like this. Two people, one holding it over, take the drive shaft out so you can swing a hammer. You have to find something that's big enough to hit the hub. And it has to be small enough to go through the bearing. So we have a new bearing and the hub. You still have to take the inner race off here. Uh, sometimes it's easier rather than fiddling around with this inner race trying to get it off because the tone ring is in the way. Uh, it's easier just to put a new hub on. But anyways, uh, if you're going to reuse the hub, just pull this bearing, this brace off, clean the hub, and then assemble everything in reversal removal. Thanks for watching.